26 in favor of Villanova in the series history, but things could turn around in matchup number 50. Now we'll get set for the face-off. Villanova wearing navy. The uh, looks like dark purple and gold numbers for Drexel in the circle. And the fight for the ball will be won by the Dragons. And they'll start out with the first possession. It got loose again, but they stay on top of it. And they'll bring it up the field. Laid inside, the shot goes wide. And Drexel's ninth of the season. And now back in the circle. Fight for the faceoff. The Dragon's going to win it again. But as the ball gets loose, Villanova get on top of it. And I'll say that's definitely a crucial ball to win for the Wildcats after conceding. They don't want to give Drexel another attack. Yep, we'll see what Villanova... But I think that real goal was even better. And now the faceoff will be won by... It's going to go the way of the Wildcats after the ball had gotten loose. But indeed, great goal from Drexel. On the inside roll. And I love the way he finishes in front of the goal, takes a hit. He pops up and gives Villanova the lead. Villanova capitalizing. Villanova's had no problem getting shots off. And again, you know, you talk about Drew McGill, the goalie for Drexel, coming in on kind of a hot streak as CAA Defensive Player of the Week, but Villanova's had no problem solving him early. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a wake-up call for McGill in the net, having to deal with so many tough chances, but certainly. And oftentimes that seems lucky, but for a goal scorer like Semple, he's in the right spot at the right times more often than not and he's able to catch a thing yeah and i know and as you're a player yourself you know that sometimes it's more about the positioning than the ability able to get to the rack score take a hit draw some contact and make the shot those are the type of bruises that you can look back and smile at after the game because they also led to a goal the sixth you know, goal down. of the first quarter headed to the wildcats and yeah, Marcus, so far, as you've been as we've been talking about, Villanova aggressive on the attack, and of course they have possession again. They've already taken eleven shots with five of them on target. As a as a shooter, all you gotta do is put it on the frame and it's going in. So we'll be back to the circle for the face-off. Villanova have won five of seven. But this time Drexel will pick it up. And that's gonna be useful for the Dragons. They trail by one and now on a quick attack, could even equalize. Ranged effort's gonna miss, but it'll stay with the Dragons with 6.43 to go in the first quarter. And then Semple just pops to his left. Easy, easy buckets. So with that, a first half hat trick for Semple, and we are tied at four, and we're about to reach the nine minute mark of the game with six to go here in the first quarter, but the red hot off. Probing on that righty wing, puts a pass right on his teammates here, and Tomac knows what to do when he gets his hands great. Great long range effort, and Drexel are back in the lead, five to four. We've got just two minutes left in the first quarter. And one of the final attacks of the quarter are gonna go to the Dragons as they win the ball off the face off. They've now won four few votes in recent top 25 poll while Drexel hadn't for this upcoming matchup, but they lead five to four. And in a matchup of explosive offenses, the Dragons have just been one step ahead. And with this hard fight for the faceoff, will they be able to stay ahead? And no, they won't. It's eventually gonna be knocked away and it's gonna fall to the Wildcats. In battles where the Villanova attackers would make the move, cut to the inside and get a point blank shot. But here, when they're running zone to avoid those point blank opportunities, they're able to pull it up top and Missioner converts her first goal of the game. Nice ground ball there. Second, and I think goalies sometimes struggle to react to shots like that because of the deceptive release. So nice job there by Crawford. By the time Wilson realized that was gonna be a close shot, it was too late and Drexel are back in the lead. After a pretty hard fought face off. Look to see a penalty on the play. 
can't tell whether it's going to be on the Wildcats or the Dragons, but yeah, both teams fighting hard to regain possession. And I think it'll be inside on the crease and a great feed. And I love that quick release, right? If, if you're you're under six, seven yards, it's not so much about, you know, perfect place sit inside on the crease and a great feed. And I love that quick release, right? If, if you're you're under six, seven yards, it's not so much about, you know, perfect placement or massive power, but if you can get it out of your stick quick and put it on the frame. Be seen, 13 scored. Yeah, just playmaking and great pace from both of these offenses, and Drexel certainly has the momentum as we hit almost the halfway point of the second quarter. And that is going to be unfortunate for Villanova. They thought they were finally getting the ball back. And switch, but you got to guard your man. You got to cover the guys that are cutting. And McIntyre with a nice feed. Michener with the finish. That's Michener's second goal. And McIntyre's first assist of the game. But yeah, just a great play, forcing a tough decision from the Dragons' defense. And the defender chose, I think, somewhat poorly that time. The 13th goal of the year for Missioner. He continues his strong start. And Villanova, over that kind of hurt Wild, the Wildcats in the end because they were moving up the field. They weren't as focused on defense after winning the ball back as this faceoff is going to fall to the Wildcats. Good movement to get in front. The Wildcats are going to send it all the way back to their goalie, but you love the effort on the play from Villanova's number 21 as the Wildcats will now bring it up the field. Played out wide and they'll continue. Makata is certainly a playmaker. It's funny that it hit the helmet. I couldn't tell because they've got the, the white handle, like the white bars on the mask. It was, I think, tough to tell because it just blends in with the ball. But, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I mean, sometimes you just got to use your head to make a play. But yeah. I'm not sure if Villanova's coach exactly means using your actual head if he tells his team to do that. <laughs> Fight for the ball. Wildcats fighting to keep it. And they will for the moment. But Drexel not giving them a lot of room to keep it forward. Score take the score out of it right <laughs> getting a stop when you're two men down is a huge momentum swing right and for Drexel to able to capitalize on that get an easy dunk and finish now they go up by three and they're in control of this game that's the first goal of the quarter I mean we've through the screen right there so that'll be bad news for Drexel and may have been the break that Villanova needed to get back into the fight yeah, Nicholas Lucchesi on the goal. Give the assist to Mason Real. And I think that flag was wiped off. I think they were going to call it interference, which is just a 30-second penalty. And Nova now taking control of this face-off battle, winning 15 of 21 on the day. Been dominant on the face-offs, had a majority of possessions, and it's certainly in close fight. With your outside hand, which in his case is his weak hand, so... Nice job taking the extra step there and finishing. And now the Wildcats will get the face off and maybe a chance here on the transition as a quick response. That was a very nice battle for the ball for both the Dragons and the Wildcats. Drexel will be on the road against St. Joseph's on March 10th and Villanova will host Pennsylvania on March 9th. It'll be the Wildcats fourth game of the, sorry, third game of the year, a fourth game of the year against a top 25 ranked team in the nation. Maybe that possession, apart from, or was probably the best overall possession, and arguably uh, the best goal, apart from maybe one of the long range efforts or another good cut to the net. But I think Villanova would say the best goal would be their 12th one if they can retake <laughs> the lead from Drexel. Upfield as he shot that, I think it was a little bit of a deceptive shot for Wilson to see and maybe just banked right off his, his legs there as he snuck it in near side. Now we continue play with a 12-9 lead back on Lacrosse TV. And if you've only just started tuning in now, well, you've still got a pretty exciting final five minutes to go. And Villanova are looking to increase the pace of play again, bringing it up close. Not enough room to score instantly off. And you can see the frustration from Coach Brian Volker at the bottom of your screen taking his hat off. We've got a game on our hands, folks. Yeah, I mean, you're up by three with five minutes to go. A defensive stop certainly does and will the dragons be able to win with this face off still loose everyone falling over getting the ball and drexel come up with it 
And you have to say, with two minutes to go, that is one of the most important face-offs of the night. And now it allows the Dragons to start to work this shot clock. They've got 70 seconds to kill. Their game, multiple passes, right? Guys moving the ball through X to the wing. And we're probably gonna have a stalemate here on this face-off as we head into overtime. Wow, what a huge goal by Tyler Bowes. And they've been facing off well, winning 20 out of 28, but we'll see who takes this one home. So will it be the 21st for Villanova or the 9th for Drexel? It's going to go to the Dragons, and they love to took 90 seconds for that break. Another overtime period. We're tied at 12. This is the first game that Villanova's had in overtime. Drexel had one to open the year against UMBC. They went on to win 11 to 10. And now it'll be Villanova starting us off after winning their 21st faceoff. Big faceoff win there for Villanova. It actually looked like they were gonna call timeout as they were slowing it down, but no, they